Hi folks, I'm Father Joe Grimaldi, but you can call me Joe, and welcome to my podcast. Today, uh, we'd like to talk to you about the seasons of Advent and Christmas. It's an exciting time of the year, that's for sure. Families are getting together, children are excited about receiving presents, and the joy that only this time of the year can provide. But let's not forget about the true meaning of this season. We are celebrating the coming of Jesus Christ. Here now is our host and friend, Ken Calvert. Father Grimaldi, I remember as a kid that our family had an Advent wreath with, I believe, four candles. Now, we also had a Christmas tree because we were getting excited uh, about, you know, the Christmas holiday. Uh, I was an altar boy, as we called it back then. And I remember that prior to the Christmas Mass, the church and the altar seemed almost uh, simplistic, stark, if you will. And I notice that still today. Would I be wrong to say that, for example, the mall looks a lot more like Christmas than the Catholic Church? No, I, I think you're correct. The, uh, the thing is this, though. It is not a penitential season. It's a season of anticipation. And it's interesting that uh, people associate it with Lent because we wear the color purple. But by the same token, it's more anticipatory to the birth of uh, the Lord, so the nativity that we are all looking forward to. And basically, Advent is a time when uh, people get, oh, how should I put it, easy, they get excited about Christmas is coming, the Lord is coming. Now, there's, uh, there are questions that I have, uh, the differences between culture and religion. Um, and I think what I see happening in the United States, but I think elsewhere as well, is that the two are getting mixed up. I wanted to ask you about the division of the commercial side versus the spiritual side. Do people ask you about that? Unfortunately, they don't. They fit into the culture. It's part of the culture. So the kid that wants to see (laughs) Santa Claus more than celebrate the birth of Christ. Oh, definitely. (laughs) Okay. Culturally, that's taken over, and so much so there were questions, depending on what part of the country you come from, uh, as to whether or not it was appropriate to say Merry Christmas to people. Um, you really have to stay close to Happy Holidays or, you know, Merry Holidays or whatever you want to call it. But uh, it's interesting that the whole idea of Christmas seems to be fading, uh, particularly because of the stronghold. I think, of the cultural aspect of Christmas basically to a lot of people means lots of gifts, lots of dinners, beautiful carols in the background, the tree goes up and people are singing and merry and so on. What's wrong with that? Nothing. Nothing's wrong with that. But the thing is this. Don't they somewhere in the back of their minds remember the purpose or at least think about it? That's what I question the other fades out and basically it's the uh, winter solstice so we this is what we're celebrating just like in ancient days okay um they don't specifically say that but you know what i mean i do we're celebrating something that we need because winter is dull and you need something now one of the things that i want to go back to advent we all recognize that the 24th or 25th is the shortest day of the year. Of the year, yeah. I believe it's the 21st, actually. So you start to begin to see light again. Right. Um, In the beginning, of course, it's slow coming, but then it is. So that, to me, uh, makes Advent a season of hope because it's uh, all of a sudden now we're beginning to see that there is some light at the end of the tunnel. tunnel, It's not going to be the doldrums of of the winter getting us down and and people uh, staying within their homes and and so on and so forth. But anyway, so maybe I'm ju- jumping back and forth. You no, no, you're yourself. doing a beautiful job. I'm but following I, it perfectly. Yeah, but I think the uh, cultural aspect is taking over. I don't know how many more years it's going to happen that, uh, that uh, we still remember Christ to an extent, of course. We're not fundamentalists either. That's another thing, too. Right. The fundamentalists would make sure 
that you know Christ would be the main event but uh, what happens is even though it is still the purpose it's overshadowed by the gala parties that are had uh, throughout time uh, throughout town throughout the various societies and so on and so forth and parties have nothing to do with Christ but go ahead is that your job then as a priest to say but let us not forget that we are celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ exactly but the thing is this <laughs> we go a step further because Advent is the preparation for Christmas Day when Christ came for the first time and walked the same earth that you and I walk. However, it's also a preparation for ourselves to get ourselves ready to meet Christ when he comes again. Because we believe in what's called a parousia, the second coming of Jesus Christ. And so Advent is a time, yes, we prepare ourselves to open our hearts so that the Lord could come into the heart and beautifully said it's nice and so on but even more deeply we prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord when we will meet him on whether it be my last day or the Lord's last day when he comes on earth uh, you know when, and when he questions us what have you done with your life so we prepare ourselves uh, during Advent. Um, you know, Advent is a time when most of the churches have set aside a lot of time for confessions. And again, that's part of it, to prepare ourselves for the coming of Jesus, but also for the second coming as well. The second coming of Christ. If I may ask, how do you imagine that? Is it an event? That one confuses me. Well, I a lot of people are we all are I mean in a sense that we don't know exactly what that means we speak about the end times we speak about the end of the world we speak about uh, the last judgment when he comes to judge the living and the dead um, what does what does that event look like is it over a period of time or is it uh, part of the mystery Oh, it is part of the mystery. There's no question. All right. Yeah. Part two, do you feel it's tougher than ever to get the message out on how important it is for us to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ? It, let me put it this way. It is tough. I don't know if it's tougher than ever, but basically what I'm thinking is that the the culture is so strong, and it's very strong, that it undermines, for example, evidence of that would be fewer and fewer people going to church fewer and fewer people even during the holidays where you get a lot more people coming but a lot less coming you know this time right. so it's um, you see the number of people dwindling because they have to spend more time okay. going to prepare for the special turkey dinner or ham or whatever the case might be um, and who are we going to invite and so on and so forth it's almost as if the celebration takes over and undermines the reason for the celebration uh, it's like very often and I've spoken about this before with brides who prepare for the wedding and not for the marriage huh? so in other words that takes over basically the the place the food the music all of that there's nothing wrong with those things by the way I I, I think these things need to be celebrated because it's part of our human nature to want to celebrate these good things. But by the same token, when they take over so much that the other just starts to disappear, then what are we doing? <laughs> we have to question ourselves. Children think of Santa Claus first, obviously. And isn't that fair? I don't know about fair, but it's natural. But this is where the 4 o'clock mass, I'll say the 4 o'clock mass, the afternoon mass for the children uh, hopefully takes over where they enact the birth of Christ the um, the child Jesus is presented and so on and so forth so maybe maybe some of these children will make a connection um, as I said before there's nothing wrong with celebration now you know you brought up something like gift giving we live in a prosperous time, okay? Yeah. In many ways. 
and thank God it's good but by the same token some people foolishly will um, in my mind anyway I hate to use the word spoil the kids with thousands of gifts that they don't even know what they received huh? mm -hmm. they just are did you ever walk into a room where there were little kids on Christmas morning? I mean, yeah. there's boxes and wrapping paper and this being up in the ceiling and so on and so forth. Some are being taken down from the tree and so on. So it's interesting to see all of that. Um, but by the same token, isn't it a little too much? They don't even know what they got. <laughs> you ask them, what did you get for Christmas? Well, um, they pick out one or two things that right. they did get. I think what's happened is parents who particularly have suffered even a little bit when they were growing up then want to make up for it when they have their own children yeah. by making sure that these kids lack nothing. Well, they'll still lack nothing if you get them the appropriate gifts. And I don't know what the, the appropriate number is either. I mean, I, I'm not... Uh, uh, versed in that at all but I do know this that what's happening now in many families kids get anywhere between 20 to 40 gifts um, of really? toys and they really? don't know what they're doing with them yeah. they have no idea because after they've opened one, two, three they forgot what they yeah, what's in the bigger box so you know it's interesting but anyway so I think that that has to be curved a little bit I'm not trying to reform society. But, but do, you, do you talk to that at the pulpit? As Father Joe Grimaldi asked the Vada, look, you're getting your kids 15, 20, 25, 30 gifts. Enough is enough. But is that your responsibility to stand in front of a congregation going in front of these beautiful children going, you can't do that? In a way you can. It depends on how you structure what you say. For See, example, that's why I like you, because the way you can you handle it so well, and I don't. It's not my job to tell them that, but it is my job to say that excess does not help anybody, because you have to really structure what you have to say. And I've done it, but I mean, you structure it so that it becomes part of the, uh, the, the message that you're giving on a particular day. Now, you don't want to do it on Christmas Day, Christmas Day is a day when... Well, let's celebrate, yeah. Yeah, let's celebrate, and we thank God for all of us being here, and we thank God for our health and, and enjoy the day and so on and so forth. However, Advent would be a good time because Advent is when you want to practice um, the virtues that we want to really bring across to the kids. And so, you know, it's there's ways of doing it without pointing at people and right. telling them this is what you have to do well, I don't well there was a time though that that priests ah. did that you know yeah but a lot of people just ran away they didn't uh, i don't think they bought that they well, bought it superficially but not interiorly is it your happiest time of the year as a as a priest as a person do you enjoy it yes i do enjoy it particularly because it's a time when people are smiling yeah when people are happy uh, the most important celebration for the church is Easter, of course, but it's interesting that uh, Christmas has all the bells and whistles uh, attached to it. <laughs> so that, for example, as you go through the malls, you have those melodious carols. You, they can't help but get to, you know what I mean? Right. And then the smells of Grandma's coffee cake and the smells of the various other treats that you get at Christmas time. Um, seeing the children jumping up and down so they could see Santa and things of this sort. Those are happy days, happy times. Huh? But Easter is also happy, more important, but also happy. I always get a big kick out of, we always hear the Alleluia chorus at this time of the year over and over and over again. <laughs> right. And yet, Handel wrote it for Easter, not for Christmas. <laughs> <And so. laughs> What's the one thing you wish 2017 Christmas, your message in a simple form would be? I'm not being Pollyannish or anything like this, but I think if everybody could take seriously to address peace, peace starting in your own heart, sometimes we're just messed up. Mm -hmm. We have to work on that. Peace within the family. Peace that starts here. P 
peace that starts within the family peace that starts with the neighbors the neighbor that's a bother bothersome individual that you really can't stand but at least you have the courage to say good morning or how are you and so on and so forth if that could really catch on <laughs> and find peace in our cities so that violence wouldn't be emphasized i just think um, violence even within families people shooting one another by mistake and uh, i won't even get into the debate of guns and so on but you know what i'm saying is so peace here peace with our families peace in our cities peace in our country and eventually and eventually peace in the world that to me would be the most beautiful message that we can give at christmas time This is Father Joe Grimaldi, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the Father Joe Podcast.